I'm going to talk basically about different types of medical degrees within science that you can get into. First, I'll talk about some of them that are available here at Glen Oaks, of course, because that's where we are. And then I'll talk about a few that are available in nearby areas and then try and expand from there and, of course, answer any questions that you have that I can answer about science medical related degrees. Um, the first one <clears throat> that I happened to put on here and it just happened to be on the list that I picked up um, first was phlebotomist. This is actually a science degree um, or a science certificate to the, um, well, what's the program here? Allied Health um, at Glen Oaks. It's about 24 credits. You basically learn how to properly collect blood samples as safely and carefully as you can so that you don't give yourself a disease or the patient that you're working on a disease. Um, many schools combine phlebotomy degrees or phlebotomy certificates with other programs. For example, Glen Oaks has an Associate of Applied Science and Allied Health degree um, that I'll talk about towards the end here. So phlebotomy is actually a decent career. Another thing about phlebotomy, it tends, at least in the places that I've worked before, it tends to have a high turnover rate, which means employability is good. You can find a job easily. But uh, if it has a high <coughs> turnover rate, what does that also mean? People generally don't want to work in there very long. So um, to my experience, what a phlebotomist is usually is a young person who wants to get into medicine, and this was the easiest place to get in and get a job. So they went there, and then usually, in the ones I've seen, it's exactly like this. They want to go somewhere else because they want a better degree. They want to go actually higher. Yeah, please. All right, um, click again. A couple more times just to fill the slide. Uh, Medical Administrative Specialist is another degree that's offered at Glen Oaks. I'm sorry, it's not a degree, it's a certificate. And this person is more on the clerical side of medicine, so they're interested more in keeping records and files, um, helping with insurance coding and billing and those kinds of things. I'm not sure exactly how it's a science degree, but there it is. Again, this is often applied to other programs, and it's one of the possibilities for that applied um, associates of science degree. Go ahead. Just, oh. I haven't been saying it, but at the bottom, I kind of give an idea of the pay range for these people. Medical assistants, this is actually what I did for almost a decade. Um, medical assistants at this school, it's around 50 credits to get there. I took a different route. I was a hospital corpsman in the United States Navy, and when I got out of there, um, I was basically okay to work as a medical assistant, but I wasn't certified, so I was not an official certified medical assistant. I didn't have any trouble getting hired, though, because of my military background. Um, duties often depend on where you work. Usually medical assistants work in doctor's offices, so if you work in a, um, in a general medicine office or a pediatric office, you'll do different things. And if you work in a specialist's office, like an orthopedic surgeon or something like that, then you'll do other things. For example, in the ortho office, you might be taking off a cast, putting on cast, or helping to put on cast, and things like that, whereas in a pediatrics office, I guess the downside is most of the time you're giving shots to kids all day. That's a major job in pediatric offices. Um, in the offices that I worked at, I was in a group of primary care clinics, OB clinics, and um, pediatric offices. And when I visited the peds office, I gave lots of shots. When I was in the general office, I saw basically all adults and for all kinds of different things. So if you're interested in seeing the variety of what's out there medically, a medical assistant in a primary care clinic is a great place to be because when anybody has any kind of problem, they usually go to the general practitioner first. Um, in terms of what you do, another thing I'll say about that is being a medical assistant, you're working under the direction of registered nurses usually, or LPNs, um, and of course the physician. And if you're really close with the physician and the physician gets to know you, often you'll be able to come with them and do things that you would not normally be able to do with only a certificate type of um, accreditation. See what I'm getting at there? So to give you some examples, um, I've had patients that came in with a big, one man came in with a big gash on his leg, and the emergency room had angered him earlier, so he didn't want to go back there. So we ended up stitching him up in the office, and I was the one that got to do the sutures because the physician was busy, and the physician just kept popping in on me and making sure that I was doing okay the whole time. So the, the things that you might be able to do as a medical assistant will depend on who you work for. Um, so if you decide to go this route, my advice is pick really good the office that you end up wanting to work in and don't be afraid to take on responsibilities if you want to be able to do new things. Make yourself available to the people that you work with. 
let them know that you want to expand what you can do. The downside to that, as I can tell you by personal experience, is even if you're able to do a lot more than a regular medical assistant can do, the pay range is still maximum of around 30000 a year, which is actually, for this area, that's, that's probably pretty good. Um, another thing about this, when we show you salaries, it 